This episode of Into the Boundary is powered by Thomas Financial Group. If you enjoy our episodes, make sure you like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content. You can also listen to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. This is Daryl Watson. I'm Eric Taylor. I'm Lamette Ford. You're listening to my boy Lou Mobley on Into the Boundary. This is Jamal Cussin. I just got finished with Lou Mob doing Into the Boundary podcast. You an athlete from the city? Got story to tell. It's a great opportunity to get your voice heard, man. Come holla at my man on Into the Boundaries with Lou Mob. Just finished the Into the Boundary podcast with Lou Mobley. More athletes should come down from Philadelphia and do your thing. Want to tell your story? Come on out. And talk about, you know, all your, your experiences and, you know, get your voice heard a little bit. So sit down and talk to him. Check him out. Welcome to Into the Boundary, the podcast with no boundaries, where sports meet real life. I am your host, Lou Mobley. And today we have a second round draft pick from the 2012 WNBA draft. Three-time All-Pub selection, public lead champion. MVP of the championship game, PA Player of the Year. Finished her high school career at ENS with 1,211 points. All Big East freshman team, second team All Big East, All Big East championship team. Scored 1,574 points in her career at DePaul. Won a gold medal in the World University Games in China. She has played for the Seattle Storm, Minnesota Lynx, and the Chicago Sky, as well as a long career playing basketball overseas. Keisha. And is it Lou Mob or Lou Mob? Happy to be here. Mom, I'm happy to finally get you here. I had to, you know, I was hyped when you got back to me so quickly. I was like, oh my gosh, she really going to do the podcast? You know, me and the fellas are talking. I was like, bro, we got to improve the set. We about to have Keisha on this drone. Like, we got we to get these new chairs. We got to get, you know, we just can't be looking all bummy. We had to step our game up, you know. Just because you was coming. I appreciate that, you know. Chairs is nice. They're comfy, you know. <laughs> Good looking for me. No, man. We appreciate you coming on. Um, just just tell us about your upbringing, where you grew up at, your family dynamic. Um, so I'm from West Philly, the Winfield section of it. Uh, grew up right across the street from Overbrook High School. But all my family's from North Philly, though. So, you know, I got some strong North Philly ties. My mm -hmm. mom, dad. All Sherbury Mansion area. Um, I'm the youngest of three. I got an older brother, older sister. My brother who? My sister didn't. She ran track. So she's some kind of like an athlete. Okay. No. Okay. Um, <laughs> but yeah. So so just grow so just growing up, um, was it like real competitive in the house? Between me and my brother for sure. Um, when I got serious about basketball, you know, like I always felt like I could beat him, like couldn't touch him, but just felt like I could beat him just because I got serious about it, too, you know. Um, super competitive. Everything we did was competitive. We, you know, made baskets in the house. Everything we did, like, if I win this, you got to do this. If you win this, you got to do the dishes for the week. Like, everything we did was a competition in the house. Oh, that's crazy. Um, just speaking a little bit about your parents, your dad. Your dad was the one that got you involved in basketball? Yeah, my dad, um, he played – my dad played at uh, – Bethune Cookman for a year, then he transferred to Cheney. So he played and um, at Cheney when John Cheney was the coach. Wow. Um, yeah, he played. He was he played. I think what I played Ben Franklin. So uh, he got me into it. He kind of like he's like a North Philly legend a little bit. They call him Showboat. You know, he got a little a little name in North Philly. Everywhere I go in North, you Showboat daughter, you Showboat daughter type stuff. So yeah, um, he that he got me into it. Was he like the type of dad that had you out there in the free throw line like real early? You probably wasn't. Even, how old were you when he put the ball in your hand? No, he wasn't that type. It was actually like following my brother around. So he coached my brother. Um, so just following him around. You know, I'm kind of like the ball girl. So I'm just around shooting on the court, or whatever. So it was just like I think it was like one league, actually like an Overbrook league. And um, my dad had some ten year old boys, like ten eleven year old boys, and he just threw me out there with him. He was like, "This is your chance." And he threw me out there. I was nine. And I started playing with him. And that's just how I really started. But he was never the type like, my dad is crazy. My dad never worked me out, ever. Never worked me out in the gym. Like, he never, like, come on, we're in the gym working you out. Like, never. Like, he always put me in, like, leagues or, um, like, my brother would do it. But, like, my dad never. But why do you think that is? I don't know. I just, I don't know. I really couldn't tell you. Like, it's funny because this just came to my head while I'm talking to you, like, thinking, like, damn, my dad never worked me out. 
Like, I promise, like, I never was in the gym. Just me and my dad shooting no rebounding, never. No, so go back to the story. You said that he just threw you in the game. Threw me in the game. I'm on the sideline, like, no, no, he told me. He said, you go, you go, you go play with us this game. You know, like, I'm like, okay. And, like, he really put me in the game. And I was out there. I probably was terrible, but, you know, I was still out there, though. Maybe I hit a shot. I can't remember, but that was, like, my first time playing, like, like basketball, like organized basketball for real was what my dad just put me in the game. So what, at what age would you say you kind of, like, started to, like, really take it seriously, you know? I would say going into, honestly, I would say going into high school for real. Like, before, I was always, like, playing. Like, I started playing, like, AAU with um DBL organization. It's not around anymore, but it was, like, the, that was, like, the big organization in Philly um, back when I was, you know, playing. I would play in, like, middle school, elementary, but – just like, you know, I'm just hooping. It's like, I'm not really, like, taking it serious. It's like, I'm just like, I can play basketball. I like basketball. You know, I'm just playing. But when I got to high school, I think I, I met my coach, um, Dave Hargrove, and it was another, it took off from there. Like So so going going to ENS just to freshman year, y'all had a connection? Yeah, it was crazy. I mean, um, he was my world history teacher. <laughs> my world history, like, um, he was like a teacher's aide or whatever. And I was just in there. We was like talking. And he heard me like talking about something. Like I, I felt like I was talking about like Tracy McGrady or something. It was real random. And he like looked at me like Tracy McGrady, like, you play? And I'm like, yeah, I'll play, you know. And um he was like, Well, he was gonna start helping because his first year at ENS was actually my first year too. So he was like, Well, I'm gonna try to help with the girls team. You trying now? And I'm like, Yeah, I'm gonna try out, you know. And um, he's like, What position you play? And I would just say, I'm a shooter. <laughs> like, I'm a shooter. I can shoot, you know? Right. And, uh, yeah, so, like, he got, we got together. He um, he was a Temple alum, so we was always at Temple working out. And that's just how it started, you know? Just, he had me in the gym. He was the first person that, like, had me really in the gym, working on my game, like, working to get better on something. Just not hooping. Wow. Mm-hmm. No, just uh, before then, like, you know, you said you, you said you were talking about Tracy McGrady. Mm-hmm. Who did you watch? Like, who did you kind of like like or like try to steal from their game? You know, up? at that time, I don't know. I was so young. I was just like, I really like Vince Carter, and this I just like him because he because he could dunk, and right. it was like, damn, Vince, like yo, he got bounce. Like that's how I was like back in the day. I just like Vince. Of course, I like AI because I'm from Philly, and that's just what you when you from Philly, you like AI. So I like AI. Right. Um. But then I didn't really like study anything like at that time. I really like I was just watching basketball, not really like watching it to to learn. I watched it because I liked it and was learning to love it. Right. Um, so yeah, like I just watched Vince because he was exciting. You know, he's exciting. You want we want to watch him dunk with somebody. Like that's right. what I like. And then T right. Mac, I think like around that time, like he was like he was like right below Vince. Like you know, like they both were exciting to watch. You know, Duncan. This is what I this is what I like to see. <laughs> so I was. I just like to watch them too. It was it was weird when I think about it, like just watching them dunk. <laughs> Don't make it sound like that. <laughs> Don't make it sound like that. No, we like we grew up like events and T Mac too, you know. Um, so so how did that season go? Uh, your freshman season go in us? It went it went good. So that was uh, my freshman year. We had five freshmen make the team. Um, five freshmen made the team. I believe like. Out of the five freshmen, like two of us became starters. Uh, I was one, along with uh, my high school teammate uh, Shamira. Um, but we had like we had a really good team. Um, it was good. We we wound up losing in the championship, like the public league championship, the central. Um, but we were we had a good we had a good group. Yeah, freshman year. Freshman, we had what, a good what was group. it? What was see? I'm a Philadelphia care for me guys. So just. Tell me, like, what the competition was like in the pub. You know? Oh, man, it was terrible. Like, like we would play teams. Like, we were blowing teams up by, like, 50 and 60. You know, like, terrible. It was, like, terrible games. Uh, probably, like, out of all those teams, we would, we would come across, like, a team. So, uh, we caught – all right, so Bodine, right, had, had one of my AAU teammates on his name, Jasmine Elam. Jazz was, like, averaging, like, 50, like, something crazy. Like, probably, I'm guessing, probably, like, 40. But she was really killing the pub. And, uh, like, that was, like, our big game, you know, playing hard because she's averaging so much. But we were a good team, you know. Like, she didn't have a good team. We had, like, a good team. Right. So we played them, like, we beat them by, like, 30. You know, it was easy. Like, the pub was real easy for us until we got to the championship because we never played Central until the championship game. 
So we almost like we like ran through the pub. Championship came, played the other best team in the pub, um, and lose. And lose. <laughs> and lose. So so going into sophomore year, did anything change? We were a year older. Um, we graduated a lot of seniors. Um, I think we graduated like four seniors that year. So we have uh, our other our other freshmen who probably didn't play as much. Like they, we we were playing like we were all sophomores basically playing, just right. playing a lot of minutes. And I thought we got better. I thought we got better each year. Then again, we ran into Central. Who do Central have that keep knocking y'all off? So Central had this time. They had um my freshman year they had a really good team. I can't remember all these girls' names. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try them. They had Sarah Jones. Um, was killing. They had Talisha. Lagore, she was killing. Um, Danielle Anders, she was killed. She killed me. I will never forget that. That was like that was kind of like motivation for me. My my freshman year, she like went to work on me. She made me feel like a real child. Like she was a senior. Granted, she was a senior. I'm a freshman, but still, like I tell you, like, she like bust my ass, <laughs> bust my ass, and like it was crazy. I was it was crazy. But um, they had like two other girls too. Like they their whole. That year, I want to say they had like five Division One players. Yeah, they were good. They were good. Their like freshman five. year or sophomore year? Their, my freshman year, um, they yeah. had about five Division One players. If not, if they all didn't go Division One, it was like probably two that played Division One. All college scholars, like that was out in the court hooping. Wow. And they were experienced, and they were they were really good. They were like, you know, they had won like so many games in a row. They had like this record. I can't. I'm trying to think back now. Like they had like this crazy record. Like they won all these games in a row. Like, yeah, Central was. What was that? What was my freshman year? Like 04, 04, 05, something like that. They were they were tough. So, so, so sophomore year, when you ran into them again, they didn't have all them players? Sophomore year, I did the dumbest thing I could possibly do. I broke my, my thumb, my finger, like a week before playoffs started. No, maybe like two weeks before playoffs started. How you do that? I said, I'll tell you why I'm so dumb. So in EMS, we're in the gym, after practice, playing around. It's this little uh, bar, this little like chin-up bar. And like you just play around, like you just like dunk on it, you know? So, uh, I had a little teammate named Marty, Marquisa Spicer. So she would always dump on like he, she was super little. Marty was like five feet. So she like here, look, like she just like you know we playing around for children. So I grabbed the ball. I like, watch this. I told y'all like team back in events, right? Yeah. Grabbed the ball, tried to do like a windmill. <laughs> tried to do like a windmill. So I did it. I was like, look, I'm telling everybody, like, look, windmill. And the way I hit the bar, mind you, this is like an iron bar. The way I hit it, thumb, like I broke this thumb, like broke it. Like it was, it was over for me. It was a wrap. You so, did it, they cry? You was hurt? No, I ain't cry. Like I, I, I was like, you know, like damn, like I did something. Like I like, bruised my thumb. I played the whole game and everything. Like, I didn't know. You know, you, you a kid. I'm telling you, you a kid. Don't nothing hurt you. Like I'm telling you, like Facts. you play through so much, like. I'm like, it's just sore, you know, what you got to do. You know, I talk to my mom, my dad, I sit rapid, that's what you do. I did that for, like, I probably broke it on a Thursday. I had, like, a game in Jersey. We were playing um, this Jersey team, Woodrow Wilson. And I played in a game with it. And after the game, I knew it was a rap, though, because I couldn't catch the ball. Like, I mean, I still was okay, but still, though, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm done. Then I went to, like, the hospital that the next day, get an extra knowledge. Like it's broke. You need surgery. I was done for the season. So you end up missing. You end up missing them playoff games. Yeah, I missed the playoff games. You still made it to the championship though. Cause y'all was nice. We were, we were good. I told you, like we had we had some hoopers, man. We were good and um, lost. No, I just, just <laughs> I just feel like you so much tougher than me. Cause when I broke my thumb playing tackle football on the concrete, I cried. I was in, <laughs> I was in a lot of pain. I broke my left thumb. <laughs> You know, you over here, you done, you done broke your finger on the one day, played like the next day, and didn't even go to the hospital now. That's crazy. I was like, Mom, there's something wrong with it. Tears coming <laughs> out of my eyes and everything. No, but going into your junior year, like when do the um the colleges start coming in and recruit you guys? You guys are very successful. So I got, I didn't have too much like college attention, um, attention. Like it didn't come until, so you know you play AAU and, that's how you get like mostly like your recognition going around playing in different AD tournaments or whatever. 
And like even going into my sophomore year, I didn't have many like interests. I had probably like a couple like like mid major schools. Um I think I was getting like a couple letters, like nothing like nothing serious. Like I probably did, I don't even think I had maybe I had like one or two Philly schools. And going into my junior year. Have we gone into my junior year? Or maybe my sophomore year. One of them years I didn't have many. But then I had played um a lot had changed. I had went to play with an AAU team in um, New York, like the New York Gauchos. Mm-hmm. So I wanted to play in there. Um, I want to say going into was it my junior year? One summer and my recruitment just jumped. Like it went from like low D ones, mid majors to like high D ones, and just like a lot of a lot of attention. I got like a lot of attention in that circuit, um, but. That mean you had to be firing people in that circuit. Yo, we were we were good. So what I did was I played with my AU team. I had played like first the first half of the summer with them. We went to like a like nationals. So I went with my other AU team, and then I met up with the New York team, and we were we were really good. We were really good. We had a we went to like Nike nationals. We won. We actually had won the silver bracket of Nike nationals. One of my highlights from my AU career. Played with some really good people. Um, some of them teammates. Teammates, I had Markel Walker, a Philly product. Um, she went to UCLA, All American. You know, that's my homie. Shout out to Markel. Shout out to her. Um, my my other homie I played with, a girl named Dashina Stevens. She wound up going to St. John's. Um, we played with another girl, China Crosby. Wound up going to Virginia. Played with another girl. I think who was this? Uh, she wound up going to St. Peter's. I played with some, I had some other people I can't think of right now, but those were, those two I named were like, we were both like, we were all, not both, like all three of us, like 6'1", six 6'2", six just like, like guards, like just hoopers, like we got it, we just did everything, we got it done. Like Markel, man, she's like, she was like 6'2", point guard, like people called her like Magic Johnson, mm. where she could pass the ball, like it was crazy, like, like one of, she was like, like she was surprised you. It, it was still surprised me. Now that I'm thinking about like reminiscing, like man, Kel, man, the way she passed the ball was crazy. You know, it's dope to sit here and see, you know, you admire people's games like that. That's tough. Mm-hmm. Um, but going into junior year, you said after you played there, you had got a lot more attention. Like who were some of the schools that were interested? A lot more. So I had a lot of Big East schools. So I had like I was like St. John's, DePaul, South Florida, Syracuse. Um, who else was going to be like Providence Seton Hall? I had probably every Big East school like interested except for like UConn, Notre Dame, and maybe like two other Big East schools. Back oh Louisville, back when the Big East was like eighteen teams deep when it was like crazy. Right. Um, I had Florida. Florida was actually on my top when I narrowed my list down. Florida was my top one out of my one of my top three. I um who else I had? I had some other schools. Some other ACC schools, some other schools. I can't. No, I can't it's, it's all good. That was a great list. First of all, <laughs> amazing list to have. Um, so just talk about that junior year. Um, did y'all? You said y'all got better every year. So like, did y'all finally beat Central this year? Or what? Oh yeah. So this is the lead up to it. So junior year came right. We're like, we're a lot better. I'm a lot better for real. Like personally, like my game grew. Um, I actually like define my game. Before I was just at that point, I was just kind of like a like a big, like, I don't know why I was playing, like, a, a forward, like, a power forward, but, like, this was probably the year, like, I was really playing, like, a guard, more of a guard, um, and we had a good year again, I obviously ran through the pub, came down to Central again, we lost. Three years in a row. Three years in a row, man, we lost. Why y'all can't beat Big Sis? Like, I don't know, you know what, so I'm telling you, Central and I, you know, back in the day, I would be like, man, I can't stand them. Like they wag whatever, but they had a really good program, really good program, and I would I'm never gonna take away from what they did. Like they had a really good program, and we didn't beat them. We didn't beat them three years in a row. We, we were these games them. ever close? They were close. Okay. They were all close. They were all close. Never what. Never was a, maybe my freshman year was probably like a ten point game or something like that, but never like any gloss. Like they were all close games. It was just like I felt like maybe mistakes, as in like. Young, not young mistakes. I don't know. Like we weren't young. We're juniors now, so we're not young anymore. You right. know. So like, I really don't know. We just junior came. We didn't win. We didn't win. 
I keep winning every game, but the, the but year. but that game seriously, it was crazy. Every game, but that game. So so senior year. Senior is here. Senior year is here. Um, I'm committed to DePaul. Know where I'm going. Um, Let's stay there for a second since you want to shoot that first. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what made you commit there? DePaul. Um, you know what? They were one of the first schools. Actually, they were my first offer, but that's not the reason. They were one of the first schools to come out and like watch me play. Like, I, I, I'm telling you, I didn't have a lot of like schools. Like, I would get like letters, you know, talk to schools, but like, the Paul was like one of the first schools that like, came out, watched the practice, like just just wanted to watch me, like not in the game setting, wanted to see how like I was like in class in practice. Wow. Um, yeah. What type of student were you? I wasn't a good student. Not because of like, I I think I I has really started to focus on basketball like too much. Like, I could have been so much more. It's not because I you know I was like really being lazy when I look back at it. Like, just it's bullshit basically. Like bullshit my way through it. Right. Like I, I'm good. I'm good. You know I'm gonna I'm gonna go to school for free type. I'll be good. And um. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't good for me. I've had a tough time. I, like this is a thing. This is something a lot of people don't know. I took my SAT, and ACT, like a combined ten times to really? make my score. Really? Yes. <laughs> it's crazy because like I, I feel like I struggled on the SAT and everything too. Like only because I not man maybe because the work was hard, but the time frame of how long you got to sit there to take the SAT is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It wasn't. It wasn't, I don't even, it was, I can't even tell you. I just needed to score, and I couldn't get it. I could not get it. I needed the higher score, obviously, because my GPA was lower. Because, like I said, like, I was really, like, just bullshit. Like, like classes, like, I should be getting A's, and I'm, like, getting C's. In. Like, things, like, little, like, little stuff I should have been doing. But I really was just, like, it would be all right. What, what, what was your, involvement, your parents' involvement on your decision and, like, this process of you taking the SAT? Um, my parents, I mean, they asked me, like, Keisha, well, my mom, my mom did not want me to leave Philadelphia. That was, she was like, not leave Philadelphia. She wanted me to go far. Like, she really wanted me to go to St. John's. Okay. It's close. It's close. I can get there. That's how much her whole thing. I can get there. And I was like, man, no. Mom, like I gotta get away, not from you, but just like I want to get away. And um, but when I when all that was going down, like my mom, my like my my family, like they were, like they were on me, like Keisha, like you gotta get it. My coach was really on me too. He like he had said something to me that kind of like it kind of like almost like put put it in perspective for me. Like I stopped bullshitting after he was like, you know, I got a call from a junior college about you. I was like, what? It's like a junior college. Like, you understand that, like, yo, you can go, like, you have a chance. Like, you don't, you shouldn't be going to junior college. Like, right. you should be in a position where you go straight to school. Like, your grades should not be the reason why you don't go to school. It shouldn't be. And he was like, hey, you gotta get it together. So, I think I had like, um, like two months. I had to like. I took these SAT classes. And my high school teachers, like, they put extra time in with me. Mm-hmm. Like, they, like, it was a, it was definitely a, a, a everyone was involved in a, this. A village. Like, it, took, it took a village. They say it take a village. It took a village. Like, my high school coach, he was on me. Like, I went, I had him, like, for, like, a, a morning class. And during that morning time, he said, no, you, this your time to study. Like, you got to go. You going to go with this teacher. You going to go with the English teacher. For half of the time, and half of the time, you will go with the um, the algebra teacher, the math teacher. So it was like, I was I was there like for a month, like making sure I got it, because like the thing is, it's not like you know I don't say I'm not dumb, you know. It's just like obviously like me just like really applying myself and making sure like I do the work. Like I'm not like I understand. I can like I can comprehend. I can understand, but also like. They even told me, like, it's like a technique to taking the test, like, certain questions. Like, I was, it was just so much. But I had to study. I had to get it done. And we got it done. I got it done on the last test. 
Wow. So like, so what was the relief like when you? Oh my God, I was so relieved. Everyone was relieved. My college was relieved. Like it was like it was. Everyone was just like, Oh God, like, you good? You going? Jeez. You going? Like you secured it? Huh? Yeah, right. No, it was just we had stopped going to see you. Just um, how about our senior season with? Well, senior season, good. We're seniors. What are we saying? We got to do it this year. Like, this is what is our goal? Like, to be public league champions. And um, senior season came. Yeah, we we smacked Central, but we also added a really talented freshman, Brittany Ranko. And uh, she put us over the top. I guess you could say that. Cause for her, like. We were, where it was, it was like over. We were killing, we were killing, man. So, so you dominated. I know you're gonna probably be all humble, but you know you probably definitely was MVP that year. Yeah, actually, me and Brittany were like, we were both MVPs. It was like split it, like co MVP. Like we both. Oh, I was MVP at the pub. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. was MVP at the pub that year. Then, uh, for like the championship game, like we both had like a really good game. And, like we split it. Like we both co MVP. So I'm a senior. She's an MVP. I mean, I'm a senior, I'm an MVP, and she's a freshman, and she's like, cool, MVP, if you like big. At the time in the pub, y'all don't go further after the pub championship, there is no... So, I think States, States was introduced, like, maybe, like, I only think I played in States, like, I feel like, maybe it was introduced when I first got there. So, in States, I know we would lose. You know what, States was introduced my freshman year, because we lost, I believe. I think we lost, like, my first two years in the first round. To, to like just teams outside teams the city. Teams outside the city, you know. Um, I can't remember who they were, but I think we lost my first two years. I think my my third year, we finally won a game, won a game in states. And then my fourth year, we actually won my senior year. We actually went pretty far. I want to say we went to like the quarterfinals or something. Like we went, we went pretty far. Wow. So just jumping into this path for college. Um, was college everything you expected when you got there? Everything I expected. College, you know what? It was. It was. Now that I like my overall experience, now that I think about it, it was. Freshman year was obviously it was the hardest thing I ever in my life, you know, having to work like that. Um, like you just talking about on the court. On the court. I'm talking about on the court yeah. right now. Um, shit in the classroom too, right? <laughs> <laughs> but no, like. Being on your own, like, that's, like, the hardest adjustment, like, having to do everything on your own and being accountable. Like, you have to be accountable. You have to, you just have to, you have to be different. You can't, this isn't high school anymore. This isn't, you have your, your mom, your dad, whoever to baby you, your coach to baby you, to be like, you got to be here, you got to be there. No, like, when you hit, you know, we get to college, you, you got you to gotta be there on your own. You got to be accountable for yourself. Like, um, but college was everything I expected. It was hard. I mean, that, that, when I think back, that freshman year, like, those practices, like, just maintaining a balance between the classroom and practice and eating and making sure you eat, like, just making sure you get your work done, your study right. hall, like, it's like, it's like, man, it's a lot. It's, it's, a, lot. it's an adjustment for sure. Oh, my God, yeah. No, what was, what was the state of the program when you got there? Was it? DePaul was always a really good program. Never, like... So in the Big East, like always like middle, middle, like middle of the pack, the good years they'll finish for like top four. And that's saying something back in the day, whether being in the Big East with like a Yukon, Notre Dame, Louisville, yeah. West Virginia, Pitt, like, oh my god, the Big East was so crazy back in the day. Yeah, for sure. Um so they were always a good program. Um it was it was like I, I just came in, I just had a chance to prove to prove myself and put myself on the floor as a freshman. Um, I just did all the right things, I guess, you know? I did, I did what I was asked. <laughs> listen, listen why, why would things switch up from high school? You played as a freshman, yeah. I'm going to college, I'm going to play as a freshman. Yeah. Um, did, did the rest of the team take that well? Was it? Yeah, no, it was no, uh, it was like no, no like problems with it. It was like I earned the spot. Was, I wasn't given anything, like, I clearly was one of the best players on the team when I got there. Like, so, I mean, my coach seen it. He recognized it. And it was, I mean, you're good enough to put yourself on the floor. Like, that's what my coach was all about at college. Like, like I'm, like, make me play you. You know, like, yeah, you know, we know you're good, Keisha. Like, we know we, we watched you play. But, you know, you got to prove it in college. I think people forget that from, like, 
people see a lot of these high school kids like, man, he was killing, he was, she was doing this, they was doing that, blah, blah, blah. But like, you know, you got to prove it every day in college and practice and every game. Like, you just got to prove yourself. You got to put yourself on the floor. So how was your first game? You you was nervous? Oh, yeah, I was nervous. My first game was nervous, but my friends came. Actually, my coach came. Um, my friend, my friend from Philly came, and my home, my little like my little brother came. It was a tournament. <clears throat> it was a tournament uh, in Chicago, and I was nervous, you know. But obviously, you just—I mean, it's basketball, right? So I've been doing this for a long time now. So like, you know, you have nerves in the beginning, but then you like calm down. You know, I kind of—I played pretty good. You ain't go out there shooting no air balls or like do some dumb I might, turnovers. I might, I might have an air ball, maybe. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I may have had an air ball. You got to take ownership, yeah, man. Yeah, it got... probably happened. It probably happened. Um, but, you know, after a while, when the nerves go away, you know, it's like riding a bike. It all comes back. You know, you just yeah. go out there and do your thing. What was one of the things you no- noticed different from the game from high school to college oh, on the pace. floor? The pace we played at. Like, we're like a running team, so it's like – we got up and down, and uh, the just the whole the whole level, but like the girls are stronger, it's just more physical. Um, like everything changed. Everybody a little bit bigger. For sure, everybody's bigger. Like okay, like in in, in Philly when I was playing publicly, when I'm, I was six two, I'm like a center, you know, I'm mm-hmm. a center because I'm six two. But I get to college, I'm a guard, like, you know. What was that? What was that transition like? Oh, it was you know what my coach. Another thing, I gotta you know I gotta give him a lot of credit, man. He he positioned me well to be able to to transition. Like because I'm six two in a public league, like I have to be my coach. My so my coach, I call him my coach. He was the assistant. We had another head, our, my head coach, um, Jr. He'll be like, Keish, you know, I understand, but you six two, so you gotta be the center for now, you know, for us. Like you just have to play that for us. And I'm like, it's fine, you know, I have to do what I gotta do. Like, play for y'all. It's, it was no problem. Um, but then my coach always said, like, you know you're not no center. Like you you do it for you know, for the team's sake, but when you when you get to college, you know what your position is. So that's why when we work, you know, I ain't never do no center stuff, whatever, you know. You didn't play back to the basket. You was up there. My coach said, you need to face up and go around them. If you get down there, where you back at? What you doing? No, you quicker than them. Right. So that's it. That's what it was always about. Being a guard from day one. So, um, how did that season go, freshman year? It went well. We we made it to the tournament. Um, Made it to the NCAA tournament. We went pretty far in the Big East tournament. I want to say we lost to them. Who did we lose to Notre Dame or Pitt? We lost in like the the quarterfinals, I think, um, at the Big East tournament. We went to the NCAA tournament. We lost in the first round. It sucked. Mm. I remember that game. That was a bad game. Uh, we lost to I think it was San Diego State. Some girl like killed this like thirty on us. Mm. Um, yeah, we had lost to them, and that was that was the end of my freshman year. It was pretty good. Who was like the leaders on the team on that on that squad? So my freshman year, I had a um, I had a guard named Sam Quigley, whose sister is Ali Quigley, who plays for the Chicago Sky. Who was like like she was all star. Like I think she's been like all star last two years, like the three point champion in the last couple of years. So Sam, I had a girl named Natasha Williams. Um, was really good. Uh, who else did we have? Deirdre Nault, and she was really good. We had like we had some some leaders, some good leaders. But I would say like Sam was really like she was she was a, she was a really good leader. And I played with Sam for three years. Wow. Yeah. So um, how how did sophomore year go? Um, did better work? sophomore year. So sophomore year, you know, it's all about you. You know, you heard the sophomore slump, right? Yeah. So my coach always advised me against that. Like, you need to, he was like, you know, I don't want you to have like a sophomore slump, you know, like you got to work. Yeah. Like, because obviously we, after freshman year, we forget, like, we think we got it, you know, like, oh, I did this. Like, I'm good. I did pretty good my freshman year. Like, you you probably don't work as much or you think you got it. You think you got it down. Like, I'll be good. But then you could come out there and be terrible. So it was just that summer, just working. Continue to improve my game, you know. 
getting better at the things I needed to get better at. And I had a pretty good sophomore year. We same thing. I think we finished like probably like top five in the Big East. Went to the tournament, lost in the first round. Uh, who, who, who's killing in the Big East this year? Like, what schools are killing in the Big East? So, the Big East, no, DePaul is still one of the schools. So, like, DePaul and Marquette are, like, the top two schools in the Big East at this point. Um, they've been in probably the Big East Championship, I want to say, like, the last two years. Mm. It's been those two teams. So, it, it changed when all them teams left, huh? Changed a lot. Changed a lot. So, so um... You know, describe the game at that point, you know, sophomore year in college. Like, what you had added so much. You went from playing uh, center in high school to now you really playing more guard. What was um, your game like? I shot the ball a lot better. Um, like, my shot improved so much. Also, it was the style of play. Like, at the ball, it was always about a running game. And we run and shot. So, how people play now is how we were playing since I've been there. Like, shoot, run and shoot threes, that's what we did. Yeah. So, yeah, that we we've been doing that. Like he was doing that obviously before I even got there. Like it's just a style of play. It's how he is how he wants, you know, how he he wants to play. So we've been running and shooting threes. So I did that for four years in college. And it's so funny now because it's like it's that's what everybody did now. Running to shoot threes. But yeah, we've been doing that for a long time. I became a better shooter, I became smarter. Um the game, I just started understanding the game more, you know. Um I became, I became, how do I say? I want to say like more versatile. Like he put me in a lot of positions where I post the small guard. You know, if I couldn't get past this guard, maybe she was quick. You know, take her to the block, run stuff for me, sets like that. Put Keisha on the block. Um, if I got a post guard in the yard, we're gonna bring him out. Let's run this open set. The the offense was probably like geared towards me a lot more in my sophomore year. Um, but we still play. I mean. Yeah, we had a we still had a good team. Like I had a big team my in college, my first three years. Like my we had like two six five girls, like a six three girl, a six two girl. Like we had like a like a pretty big team. So yeah, we still we had a good we had a good balance. Okay. And you said y'all that y'all, y'all got bounced in the first round? Bounced in the first round again. We lost to um Vanderbilt. Was it Vanderbilt? Yes. We lost to Vanderbilt. What is the, what is the atmosphere like for the tournament? You know? Oh, it's crazy. It's it's like different. It's different. It's like NCAA tournament. You get you could just feel a is a shift. Like it's like because it's one and done. It's one and done basketball, right? Like right. March the best time of the year. Right. One and done basketball. You like like you need it. And like losing in the year before losing the year before in the first round. You're like Man, we got your best first round. You know. So it's right. kind of like you kind of put this like pressure on yourself to you know. To perform like man, we gotta do it. Um, it was a close game. We lost in overtime. It was tough. It was tough. No, so like junior year. Junior year come. I'm a junior year come and I'm better. I got better. I think. Um, I had a good summer. Wasn't my junior year? Was I going to? I'm trying to think what summer was it? Because I played with the USA team. I'm trying to think was it my. Junior summer, was it sophomore going into junior or junior going into senior? Maybe it was junior going into senior. But, but hold on. But junior year, um, better. Like, we had a – we were, like, predicted to finish. Our, I think, like, really hot, too, our junior year. Like, our preseason predictions in the Big East. Like we were, like, top four. Mm. Um, we were predicted really high. And we actually – we had a great year. I want to say, like, we beat, like, Stanford. It was, like, number two. The country beat them, we beat them by 20. How? We killed them. I don't know, man. We was on that game. Like, <laughs> we was on. I would never. I, I just like, man, bringing that, that memory coming back. Like, we killed them that game. We beat Stanford. Um, who else did we beat? We beat, like, we had a little upset that year. I can't think. It's going to come to me. But we had a good, we had a good season. Um, what was them, them games like against, like, UConn? Whew. Those games are always tough. You know, at this you at this time you can meet people by 70, 50, 40. Always packed. Gym is always packed. No, we go there, they play home, play away. Gym is always packed no matter what. You kind will bring everybody out. Who they had at the time? Who they had? My more. That's who they had. <laughs> I am more. Who guarded her? <laughs> Me. <No. laughs> 
Maya mm-hmm. Moore fried me my junior year. Oh my goodness, it was like unbelievable. It was everything. She gave me everything. Back though, it was pull ups. Just easy. Pull up threes, pull up jump shots. Anything you anything you can think of, I got it from Maya Moore my junior year. That's she proud cool. me. She proud me. <laughs> so 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 what y'all fi- what y'all finished like junior year? We finished I want to say we actually like finished like top and third or something like crazy. Like we finished really good. Oh, we beat Notre Dame. That was another highlight. We beat Notre Dame was really good. We beat them too. Um, we beat them my junior year. I had a pretty good game. And then we finished. Uh, we lost to Notre Dame in the semifinals though at the Big East tournament that year. And who they have? Skylar Diggins, Deborah Peters, oh, Natalie Novasaw. I want to say did they have um? Did they have a challenge? They had a really good team. A really good team. Notre Dame is always a really good team. Like, since I've been playing against them my freshman year, they always had, like, this good player. They just not to play. You just get the job done. Do you feel like the coaching, you know, in the game is plays a really big part of that more than, like, people oh, yeah, being, for sure. being good players? Uh, Muffet is a great coach. You know, because you can have great players, but you don't always have great results, right? right. Muffet gets the best out of our players. I mean, like she she gets the job done. And then you have and then like then you have some not so great players in people's minds, but then you get great results because coaches get the best out of what they got, right? right. Um but Muffet gets the best out of her kids and playing against her um for those years and that team, it was tough. It was tough, man. Great, great battles, but it was definitely tough. Yeah, it sounded like they get your headaches a lot, man. They did, they did. We got some headaches on. Well, you were going into um, when you you was briefly talking about when you from junior year to senior year you played um, in China or oh yeah yeah so that year um, after my junior year I uh, that's the year we went to Sweet Sixteen we lost though no shout out to Sweet Sixteen y'all made it that's yeah, an accomplishment we made it. it was an accomplishment actually so we we uh, <laughs> was crazy we was in um, the Penn State um, like region. So, okay. you know, I had family come up, and we won, like, the first game. You know, since we done lost these next these first two years, so, you know, pressure is on. Like, first game, yo, we play like Navy. I mean, we got to get this win. We got to get this win. We, like, kind of like a high seed, too. I wanted, We were like a high seed. Like, we got to get this win. It was an ugly game, but we got the win. That was the most important part, right? Then you know, we played. We get Penn State the next game. It's tough at Penn State. We wanted to win it. We wound up winning. I think I, I hit like the the free throws, kind of like ice the game. We That's tough. Winning. Yeah, and then uh, we went on to the Sweet Sixteen to play Duke. Y'all got Duke. We got Duke at Temple. We got Duke at Temple. So you know, I'm back. I'm back in the city. You know, back in Philly. I'm like, man, I went to school across the street. You know, like right. everybody here. I was terrible. I was terrible. We lost by probably like, I think we were losing by like 12 or something. Had a bad game. It was tough. But why did you have a bad game? I don't even know. I can't even tell you. Do I don't want to say it was the pressure of family, but it, I don't know. We just had a bad game. They, they had a good game plan for you? Did they have a good game plan? I mean, stop the, the, the lead score, right? <laughs> like, stop the lead score. Yeah. I was like in foul I think I like fouled out. Who's that? Uh, my fault. It sounds like you don't want to talk about that no more. No, that's fine. I'm okay. You know, just thinking about it, like, man, that was bad. <laughs> I had a chance to put on for the city. <laughs> Fumble the ball. I got you. I understand. <laughs> um, but you were saying in between junior and senior year, you went and played um, team you were saying? Yeah, I made the um, the Warrior University games. So it was 12, 12 girls, 12 young women. We went to uh, play in China. And, uh, was a great experience, like, like a, one of the best experiences of probably like my basketball career, like making that team, like playing, like for the USA team. Um, we won, we won the gold. It was just, it was just good. China was, China was. It was my first time there. It was, um, it was like where you know the food. We didn't want to eat the food. I can't remember. This was crazy because I. Like we got there, it's kind of like set up like uh, we're all like um, like a big kind of cafeteria with like all of the um, 
different countries were all like in there. They had like different type of food. They had a McDonald's in there, right? <laughs> they had a McDonald's for real. We got like a McDonald's card. I will never forget this. Yo, we were eating McDonald's like every day. It was crazy. But then it was to the point like, man, we can't keep eating this. Like we gotta try something else. So we probably got like some breakfast, but McDonald's every day. Come on, man. Um, who were some of the people on that team with you? Uh, we had Skylar Diggins. I had Elena Bella Dimes. Devro Peters, Natalie Novasaw, Jackie Jamello, um, Odyssey Sims, Shanae Wumake, Mecca Wumake. Uh, who else we had? Right. Y'all sound loaded. We were, we were, we were really good. How do they divvy up the playing time and and team on teams like that? The best players play. The more productive players play. Like I didn't even play. I didn't play too much. I mean, I didn't mind. I was there. I made it. I played. He put me in. When he put me in, I was effective. But yeah, I didn't play too much. I was playing at three behind Deladon. Like, come on. It's like, it's <laughs> tough. The minutes was tough to get. Right. Mm-hmm. Um. And all that led into momentum going into your senior year, right? Yeah, going into my senior year, you know, I was uh, we were we had we were predicted to finish pretty high too in the Big East. I was like preseason with All American, you know. I was high. I was I was ready. I was ready. Like senior year is about to about to be a good year for me. Um, probably like when this happened, Hawaii. We had a preseason tournament in Hawaii. You are traveling a lot as a young person. I'm really jealous. Yeah, we are. Uh, China, Hawaii. You see her? Yeah, you know, I appreciate I appreciate the Paul for that. They gave me a lot of good experiences. Um, but yeah, we go to Hawaii and um, I get hurt the last game. Like it wasn't like nothing like, oh my god, like it's just I felt something off. I felt something off. Like I, I went for a layup, I got like a steal, went for a layup. Kind of, I guess I kind of like stepped wrong or whatever. And I was like, man, you know, like tweak my knee a little. I thought it was like a little tweak. Tweak my knee. Nothing, you know. Like got back. It was like a little swollen. But it was like long playing right. Like you probably, probably, you probably swollen because of that. Like nothing serious. But I'm playing, you know. I'm still just playing, playing, playing. I'm like, it's cool. It was starting to like, starting to irritate me though. Play another game. Like irritate me. Then we played this one game. Like I, um. Uh, our inner city, uh, I guess you call it like robbery against um, Northwestern. And after, after this game, I, I was hooping this game. This game, I was hooping too. Even after your knee was full of funny? Yeah, like I didn't know, but you know, it was just like, it was just weird. It was like tightness, like, but nothing that was preventing me from playing. You know, I'm not to play through this. Like, it's like a little time to be good because I didn't get like an MRI or anything, so I didn't know what was going on. But after this one game, like I could not walk. I could not bend my knee. I'm like, oh, something really might be wrong, you know? So I wound up getting like the MRI two days later. And they tell me like they like chips and cartilage. But like the way they were explaining to me, like you should like you can you can try to play with it, you know, like you can try to play with it because it's like people people play with like chip cartilage. Like it happens. It was like a like a dime sized piece that chipped off or whatever. So you know. I'm like, all right, if I could have, y'all tell me I could play, you know, I'm gonna try to play. So I tried to play for probably like a month. Like pra- you know, go through practices and play. Wasn't having it. Probably like I played one big East, one big East game that year. The only reason I played that game was because the game was in December. And uh the game was in December and I had just got like a quarter zone shot. So it was it was supposed to help me, you know, to see if I'm going to need surgery. Um, got, like, the cortisone shot, and it was the first game back after that shot. So, you know, I'm feeling great. You know, getting shot my knee like I'm good. Right. I was terrible in the first half. You know, I had, like, eight turnovers that game. You couldn't move? I was just off. I have I wasn't practicing like that. You right. know, I wasn't practicing really. Um, just I just was off, like because I was sharp. Yeah, you know, so you know, I'm losing the ball, like little stuff. I mean, I probably traveled five times. I don't even know how I traveled, like like just simple, like catching into my shot, like they call it travel. Like it was a mess that first half. But then the second half, I came back and I was hooping. I guess I got myself together at halftime. I don't know, came back and was hooping. 
play St. John, so uh, played that Biggie's game. Made it, might have played one more game after that, and that was it. You shut it down after that. I, was like, I can't go because the thing was, I was uh, I had a whole bunch of memes, you know, about it with the obviously like the athletic staff, the training staff, and you know, I'm a senior. Um, I'm projected pretty high to go in the draft, you know. Yeah. All I I just need to be, you know, I just need to have like a good year, you know, like I'm gonna come out, I'm gonna go in the draft, and you know, I'm supposed to be like a first round pick. So I'm like, but what if I play and I'm terrible? Right. Is that gonna like hurt my chances? You know, like I don't know, like I would just it was just so many things going through my head, like, man, I wanna I wanna play in the league, like. But I don't want to be out there because I, I wasn't myself, you know. I wasn't like, you know, you can't play if you don't if you're not yourself. Like, I'm like, man, I can't. I can certain stuff like I should be able to do. I'm like, I can't even do this. Like, I can't even do this. like. No, I'm not right. So when I decided to have a surgery, my doctor was like, you can have a surgery. It can it can have you out for for four weeks or four months. Like he didn't know until he went in. Mm-hmm. So that was the risk I was taking going in there, like knowing that maybe I could I can possibly still come back and play if if it was just like a cleanup or something. But instead when he went in there, he was like, No, he had me micro fracture. He did it. I woke up. And I woke up. The first thing he said to me was, No, my coach was there. He said, Well, your career at the Paul is over. Oh wow. <laughs> right. Yeah, so that's what that was. was you know, how would you, uh, your parents support you through that injury? Oh, for sure. My mom was, my mom was a mess because I'm away from home, you know, and she like, you don't have anyone there. I'm like, mom, you know, I got like, you know, obviously it's four years I've developed like friends, like, you know, like my teammates, you know, they had my back or whatever. But like, no, no one's there. Like, I, you going into surgery and no, like she, she was going crazy. <laughs> you, I need to be there. To, she, she protected her baby. She was not. Like, I need to be there. She came out. She wound up coming out. Um, but it was just funny. She just, she was not playing. She was. Oh no, I need to be there. But yeah, so that's how my senior year went. Spent the rest of the year rehabbing. I was still around the team, so. But just rehabbing, trying to get back, and then. Um, that year we were still we were we were solid that year. You know what? I'm lying. That year we had a lot of injuries. Not only was I injured, it was like three other girls, like one with the ACL, mm. one with like a back injury, like and we had another injury, somebody else had something else. So we had like oh we had a freshman, freshman guard who broke her ankle, like something crazy. So we had like four injured players sitting over there. So we finished, we made it to like the Big East tournament. And we gotta be in the NCAA tournament. How? I just don't understand how y'all missing four because, or five people. Because like you got had that what that next man up like mentality, right? Like right. we we down, but my coach he gonna find a way. He gonna find a way here. That's one thing he does. He gonna find a way to win some games. And you win the games you're supposed to win. And that's what we did. We won the games we're supposed to win. So going into this next phase of your career, so. You're injured, rehabbing. You project to be a first round pick. Mm-hmm. Um, what is the process like? You hire an agent. Are they telling you your draft stock is plummeting? Like, what's what's going on at the time? So, like during this time, while I'm rehabbing and stuff, I got started. So you go to like I went to like the the women's final four. It was in it was in Denver that year. So that's around April, and that's why I like started to meet with agents and stuff about you know just. Asking them like, like you know, I was like, I'm hurt now. I didn't play. Like, what, what's my, what I'm, you know, what's my stock looking like? Like, what's going on here? Right. And they like, like I get people telling me like, no, I still, people are so interested. You know, they think you're gonna be fine after the injury. Like, um, you should be good, or whatever. So at this point, it's just hiring the agent, you know. And I didn't know. Like I met with, you know, I just didn't know. Like I feel like, you know, this is like a big step for me. Um. I don't know. I don't want to pick the wrong person, you know? Yeah. So, like, I waited for a while. And then I was talking to one agent. He was like, I mean, well, you don't have to hire. For the WDA, it works a little different. He's like, you don't have to. You don't have to have an agent for the draft. Like, you, I didn't have to have an agent at the time. I didn't. I just was like, it's the draft. Because at this point, I didn't know what, what was going on with me. Like, I don't know if I was even going to get drafted. Like, they said I was, but yeah. I didn't know. You didn't believe them? 
I don't know. I didn't. It was just like, because how can I smile? I can't see this. Like, I wasn't hearing nothing. You know, like, I'm not hearing, like, yeah, you tell me, like, you tell me, okay, this is what you heard, but, like, still over the time, like, like I'm not hearing nothing. You know, like, damn, am I still going to go? Like, am I still going to be drafted? Like, I don't know. And I was like, you know, at this time, I was a senior, probably, I was, like, done with classes, like, you know, probably finish up everything. I was like, I'm going to go home for the draft. Because if this don't happen for me, I need to be around my family. Right. You know, it's like how much anxiety is stuff going through? Anxiety, yo. Like this is what you work. This is what I work for. Like it's something like this is what I've been working for. Like since I really like took basketball seriously and fell in love with it. Like this is what I work for to be drafted in the right. WBA. And I said I gotta go home. Like I was told, I just told him like I'm going home for the draft. Like that's just that's just the place I need to be. I need to be with my family. So the draft came. Jeff came and I got my I'm, a, I'm in the house. My family, mom, dad, sister, brother, cousin, aunt, a couple other cousins. We all in there just chilling, watching the draft. All right, I'm watching it. So I'm like watching the draft. Like one of my coaches texting me, like, oh, this pick coming up. I think you'll feel good. Like, you know, just texting, texting me. I guess, you know, try to keep my spirits right or whatever. I don't yeah. know. And all of a sudden, it was like second round came. I'm like, all right, second round. It was like, oh, 22nd pick, like Seattle Storms, like Keisha Hanson. I was like, whoa, you know, like heart drop. My mom's super happy. Like my mom, my sister, like crying. Man, like, you know what happened. You know, everybody was so excited for me. And I was excited. Like, you know, I was excited, but I was still just like, man, like I was relieved. Like it did happen. Like I right. did get drafted. And why did get drafted? Did you did you have time to like take that all in? Like you said, this is everything you've been working for since you've been taking it seriously. So you get that call, you was relieved to like you you made it, but like emotionally, what was you feeling? Man, I cried. I cried. Like I am like to see, you know what? But I cried because I seen my family crying. Like right. they like when they started crying, that's when it was like, oh, you know, she started coming down. Like I started crying, like, wow. And uh I was like, man, like. You know, I got drafted. Like, I'm going to the WNBA. <laughs> like, it happened. That's it's crazy. happening. And I'm hurt, you know. Like, but that's the thing. Like, because when you get hurt, like, you don't know what's going to happen. Really? You don't know. You don't know. Like, like I don't know what, what's going to happen from here. Like, I'm hurt. I can't play. What's like, your, do they want to take this chance on me? What is your dad about, you know, when you got drafted? My dad. My dad is always, my dad is always the same person. Calm and collective or something like Calm, just cool, like, yes. Did this, he like, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Clap his hands a little bit, and that was it. He's like, really? Yeah, he's like, I mean, he congratulated himself, but it was just like, yes. It's, like, it's, it's always the same. <laughs> but always you, the same. You know that's him, so. Yeah, that's my dad, like, you know, it's, that's just him, so. So, um, where were you at with the knee at this time? So, I'm like, what, four months from surgery? Three months, January. April. I'm like three and a half months out and I'm thinking, this is another thing, like I'm thinking like I, I can possibly make it for training camp that year. So I'm like, all right, man, I got to try to get myself together. Never never really been injured seriously like that. So I don't know, like, you know, I'm thinking like, well, maybe I, I'm going to be, I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. So the day of the draft, my, I told you I didn't have the agent. Right. Day of the draft, an uh, agent I was talking to called me, like, Hey, Keisha, um, the Seattle Storm, you know, obviously, um, they're very interested in um, you coming to training camp the next season. So it was going to give me the whole year to, to you know, the whole, t- the anytime I needed. So I didn't have to go into training camp to the next season, which was like, oh, this was perfect. Like, man, I didn't, I didn't have to go try to kill myself to see if I can get back to going to training camp when I wasn't ready. Right. But now I had like a little less pressure, like, all right, well. I can just train, get ready, you know, go in the next year for training camp. And um, that's what it was. So one, after when that agent had called me, I'm like, well, I just hired him. Like, hey, this is the, you know, like he was the first person that called me, like, let me know what's going on. And then I was like, you know, I'm going to go with you. So, so that whole year, did you really stick to your training regimen and go, go play there? Yeah, so I, um, that... I was in Philly for a little bit, went back to Chicago. So I stayed in Chicago 
all the way up until I went overseas that first um, in January. So I worked out there. I did camps there. I did everything. My rehab there. So I was in Chicago that whole time. And then when I left, I went to um, Latvia, my first overseas experience in January. Um, so I got surgery in January of 2012 and went to Latvia in January of 2013. That was my first time playing again, in, in, like playing officially. Like, yeah, I was probably like scrimmaging with the girls at the Paul, you know, playing, playing pickup, but official game was the next year. So you went and played overseas before you even did you, took your one year to go to Seattle? Yeah, so what, so what was happening is the draft happens in April every year. The training camp starts in May. The season is through the summer. So the season goes May to what um, September, if you if you make it through the finals October. So I didn't have to go in like that year. So that that whole summer, like I was just rehabbing, rehabbing, rehabbing. Were they in contact with you? Yeah, I talked to them. Not like not much. Like I, I went to a game since I was in Chicago. Like I would go to a game. Like I went to Chicago when they played Chicago when they played like Indiana because I'm like in the area. I talked to him there a few times. Um, but yeah. So how was uh, Latvia? Oh, man, Latvia, my first experience, and it was terrible. It was terrible. It's just dark, man. It was dark <laughs> when I got there, dark when I left, dark when I woke up, just dark all the time. Like, like gloomy? No, I just feel like it was like this. Like, like it's nighttime. Like, you know, like it's time to go to bed. For three weeks, like it was crazy. I felt like I'll probably see you no know, literally like an hour of sunshine or something. I don't know. It was so crazy. And it was rainy. Like when I forget it was like real rainy mm-hmm. and snowy and just that was terrible. Uh and that was like my first experience of like adjusting like to that that first month. I was just I didn't know what to do with myself, man. What, what, what was the you know, what was it like on the floor playing? It was good. I mean, I was I was back. I was eager. I was real eager to play. You know, like, man, I'm back. And uh, the competition was decent. It wasn't wasn't the best. It was decent competition. I had a We had a pretty good team, though. Um, and it was cool. I mean, basketball, I practiced with one time a day. Other than that, like, after I finally had to practice for, what, two hours, one time a day, like, I wasn't doing nothing but watching Netflix and watching all types of shows. That I, was it. It sounded like you was hella isolated. Yeah, like, uh, but I, it was crazy because I, uh, like, like, like I said, like I'm young. I was young, first experience. So, like, and I was in the when I look back at it, like I'm in the capital city. Right. But before, but to me, it's like this ain't no city. Like this is like. Right. I'm here. Like this is nothing. Like. What What is it like with the language barrier there? It's tough. I mean. I had I was fortunate that teammates who spoke English they went to school in the states so that was cool. Um, I had like a trainer who spoke English because he was like kind of like my translator. But I didn't play like my my coach didn't speak English. How do you play for a coach that don't speak English? You translate. You get people translate to you. They tell you what what he say and they say it to me. But like the style <laughs> is the style of basketball the same terminology in basketball the same? Yeah. That's one thing I always uh, I forgot what coach told me, but basketball is definitely universal. Like the wing, what? <laughs> the basket, <laughs> <laughs> like some free throw, like you know, like certain stuff they might say, like you know what they were saying. So we call it, like the wing, um, the wing, but they call it the forty-five. So like the forty-five degree angle on the court. So that was like something new. After like the first time hearing, I'm like, what? Then they tell me, okay, this is what you mean. Like, all right, I got it. That's crazy. Yeah. I would have to learn like it's like certain words you learn in the language because like if we're running a play and the guard maybe the the guard can't say can't get the English version out well, you know. So like <laughs> it is just saying in the the language that language like you learn like certain. So you like you learn you learn to be familiar with them. Like the the basketball terminology, I learned like to be familiar with, or like whatever we would call a play, like if we call it like shirt shorts, like I would learn like shirt in their language, shorts in their language, like simple stuff. How many sets do you really run? I mean, everybody is simple. You don't run too much. Like horns, everybody know horns. You run like a horn set. 
Like, you want, like, some screen action, like, pin down, pick and roll. It's just pick and roll, pick and roll stuff. It's not, like, crazy set. But it was, like, easy. It like, become- it's, like, a special play. They'll call it, okay. We do, like, a lot of numbers, too, for plays to keep it simple. But you can put, like, four or five threes. <laughs> they just dumping it down for you. That's yeah, crazy. I appreciate it. So, um, so what, where did you go after that? So, from Latvia... I wanted, I was in Latvia for four months, so I went from January to like April, April, May. We actually won it, we won the Latvian championship. Then I went to a training camp in Seattle. And what was, and what was that like? Oh, it was tough, man. It was hard. It's the first, my first uh, league experience. I was, uh, I did my best going to training camp. So mind you, I'm a year removed now, so. You know, I guess, like, things the coach thought I knew, I didn't know all the way, you know, because this is my first time actually, like, being in the league. So, like, it was, like, simple stuff. Like, I remember, like, the first time, honestly, the first time I heard of, like, uh, it's called Snake in the Screen was in Seattle. I'm like, what is that? Like, what is Snake in the Screen? What is that? It's kind of like, like, splitting the screen. Like, if you have, like, a, like, you have, like, a host player and, like, you just, like, split the screen or whatever, mm-hmm. but, like, real close to the other defender. Like, this basketball tournament. But the thing is, like, they were all saying, like, snake, 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 snake. And I'm like, huh? <laughs> I'm like, look at our girls up there. Because I need to see what's going on. You know, honestly, I'm doing it. I'm like, all off. Like, my first time doing it. So, like, like little stuff I didn't know. Like, playing pick and roll, I had no clue how to really play pick and roll. Because, like, once again, at Paul, I didn't play pick and roll a lot. Um, like, we ran. Like, we were, like, a real motion. We, like, ran, like, a lot of motion. Just ran, like, I mean, I got opportunities, you know, to do my thing. Like, I'm never taking nothing away from that. But, like, as in, like, just running pick and roll sets, I didn't do it too much. So, like, I, I really wasn't familiar with it. Right. Because on that level, it's, like, just different. It's just different. It's, it's way more competitive, way, way better. Way more. It's way better. It's, things happen a lot faster. Like, they're, like, they're a lot stronger and bigger, for real. Um, But I did well, though. I, I you know... I, I held my own, you know, I did my best. Mm-hmm. Uh, I probably made it, I made it to like the second to last cut. So I played two preseason games and then I was waived. And then, and then where did you go from there? So then from there, I went to Germany. Germany, um, that, that next overseas season, which was another like, was tough. It was a really small country. Um, just like, I had, I had some American teammates. They were cool, cool people, cool girls I met. Um, I still though. It was just the country was so small. The competition was okay. When you fly into these places, like, like I'm really about to be living here hooping, like, like what you be thinking, like? Um, I mean, I don't know. It's like, like, I, I'm about to be here for six months, like, you know, like, my, I, I make the best out of it, like, whatever the situation is, like, I, you know, I'm about to be here for six months, like, I should probably explore some Right? Do I? Did I? No, I didn't at that time. I'm like, no. Nah. I was just so like, no, nah, I'm gonna go in the room to chill. Like, you know, I just didn't do much. Like earlier in my career, I should have probably like took advantage of the places I went. I was at like went out, did more exploring, just getting out the house more. Like my first couple of years, I was just in the in the crib, just chilling. Wow. I mean, were you were you nervous or you no, didn't feel I just safe? Was like, I'm good. Like, I don't know. I just was on that. Like, I'm chill. I'm all right. I go, like, I, I didn't go as much as I should have. Like, I would go, like, if they're like, oh, Keisha, we're going here. I'm just like, okay, have fun. I see how we have to back. You know, like, like why didn't I go? Like, in Germany, they have, like, um, I know I remember when I had one team and she invited me like, during, like, this Christmas thing. They have, like, really big, like, castles there. Like, something, like, it's really nice. Like, I seen pictures. They were, like, beautiful. Like, man, I should have went. This little stuff I did, like, why didn't I go and take advantage of this, you know, and see, but I was like, I, again, I'm young. I'm like, man, I'm just here to hoop. Just chilling. Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm here to hoop. I'm chilling. Did you get a chance to, like, really take it in at this point in your career? Like, hell, I'm really playing basketball for a living. At that time, yeah, I did, but not, I still didn't, maybe I was still like, ah, I don't know. I was like, you know what, I, I wasn't where I thought I should have been. Because, you know, it's like, man, I, I should be, you know, I feel like I should be playing in the league, you right. know, too. Like, I'm like, yo, I should be playing in the league. Like, I'm like, 
I'm good enough to be playing in the league, but I'm not there. So it's kind of like I still had this like, like you're not where you're supposed to be yet. Like you're not where you're supposed to be. Do I have that mentality now? No, completely different mentality. Because you 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 are where you're supposed to be. You are like if things work out the way things work out, and they work out the way they should work out. That's how I look at it now. So so how did that season go there? It was good. Um, I played well, you know. I did. I, I I still I go to these countries and I you know I do what I'm supposed to do. Score the basketball. Fry people. <laughs> fry them for real. Like <laughs> score. Um, you know. That's it. Went it went good. It was it was a it was an okay season for me. I think I got like hurt too. Like I hurt hurt like my quad during the season sometimes. So I like went through some stuff with like the the club and like being paid and stuff like that. But what kind of what, so like that's another thing over there too. Like you know like payments, which money can get real funny when you can't play or when something's going on. Like I had like hurt my quad. Like bad, so I didn't know it was that bad. Like I was still playing for a couple of weeks before I got like um, got it checked out, and um, I had needed. I think I had to. I think I needed to sit out for like three weeks to to rehab and do without all the treatment. And like I think it was like a time where like I was, I was supposed to get like my like my check, you know, paid, get paid monthly, and. He he like the, the GM just started tripping, like, oh, you can't play, like we can't pay you. Like, so it was a thing. I was going through something with my agent, like, hey, like, what's going on? Like, he's talking about like he can't pay me or he gonna pay me this or but I know why though, it's because I wasn't playing. Right. Like we were losing too. Like we lost like a couple games, but you know, I couldn't play, like it just what it was. Is and, it a lot of pressure to win? Oh yeah, for sure. It's a lot of pressure when you're an American over there. Like if you lose a game, it's your it's your fault. That's how it goes. Like, why? Why we didn't win? Like, you, you, you weren't good enough. Really? Yeah. How do you? How How did that make you feel? I mean, it's it's honestly you you learn to accept it. That's just what it is. You know, you know, like they're coming. Like, okay, they're paying me to to win games, basically, right? They're paying me to to win and to to do what I have to do. And if you not, and if you losing, it's your fault. So, so what's the mindset of the native players like? Like they, pass, pass the ball to Keisha? No, they they still do what they can do, but it's like they they play. You know, they don't just like give me the ball every time, but it's still like you are expected to score. That's what you are expected to do. So you got to do that. You got to win these games. Wow. So, so after after Germany, where did you go? France, I believe. You are on a European tour, my <laughs> friend. Oh my God! So you went to France. What was that like? France was good. I was in this really small city though, um, called Dunkirk. Uh, France was good. It was. Uh, I like had a. The best thing about France, by the year, I had like this apartment on the beach. It was like beautiful. It's, like I woke up every morning, like seeing uh, the sand, the water, like. No, I'm kind of like don't make me jealous of like you <laughs> seeing the world and I'm staying in the Philadelphia area. Nah, it was um it was cool. France was good. So my team like in France. What's an, another crazy thing is like France. I was playing on a Division Two team in France. Um, killing like like I, the number. It was crazy. I was just doing. I was just killing. And that team like was so terrible. The season before, they almost like dropped down another division. But like mm. we, I came in. I think we finished like I think we finished like second in the league, and then we almost moved up to the first division, and we lost the championship game. So you almost like changed the whole club yourself. Yeah, I did. I had I had a good time there. There was some good people there. Like I met the um. It's still so funny to this day. Like the mayor of the city. He, he writes me on Twitter. I don't know what he's saying, but he still just, like, writes me and says things. Like, you, don't tra- have- you don't translate it? I don't. Sometimes it's like, what is going on? Like, I look at it, like, I don't know what he's saying, but it's something good. <laughs> I don't know. You tight with the mayor in France. That's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, he's cool. They were, they were, like, a good, they were a good people, like, a good club. Even, like, my coach, he, my coach in France, he had, like, stopped coaching women. He started, like, coaching men, but still he would be, like, reaching out to me. And when I signed back, to, when I signed to go to France this year, like in the first division, he was so he was super happy for me. Like wrote me a message, like 
happy you're coming back in the first division. You belong there. And see, that's another thing, you know, why I said, like, I'm not where I'm supposed to be yet. Like, why am I playing in the second division in France? Like, come on. Like, I went to, like, the first division games. I'm, like, seeing these girls. And I'm, like, yo, I can hoop. Like, I just, I'm, like, I'm just as good as these girls. Like, you're not going to tell me I'm not just as good as these girls. Like, I watch them play. So it was kind of, like, man, like, you know, my career still wasn't taking off how I expected, you know, like, it's like, you know, but like I said, like, you, where, you, where you are when you're supposed to be there. So did you get any other shots, you know, going back to the WNBA? Yeah, so after Germany, I had, a, I had a chance to go, I played with the Connecticut Sun training camp, I was terrible, ooh, I was bad, I was bad, like, I, I was, like, I got sick, it was, like, crazy, I got, like, sick going into the training camp, I don't know what happened, crazy, like, some type of like throat, like I had like a viral infection in my throat. I couldn't eat for two days. Like people don't notice. Like it was so crazy. But you know, you ain't, ain't no excuses. You push through. Right. So I, I was there. Like I, I ain't have no excuse. Like I was sick. No, like I was terrible. I ain't make. I got cut like the like the third day. I ain't even make it to a preseason game. What, what is that? What is that like? Like how how do they how do they cut you? So. You go there, you go to the training camp. So you go through there, you hoop. I mean, you obviously, you, you like, you do drills, you run sets, you, you play, you play games, scrimmage, and um, you got to stand out. You try to make a team. You got to do something. You got to show me something. I ain't show nothing. Maybe here, maybe something here or there, but not nothing consistently where it's like, I deserve to be there. So how do they tell you? This, the so in Seattle, how they told me was it was after our second preseason game, and they were just like, you know, when it's happening, you better first of all, you, you get a feeling of it. I kind of had a feeling of it like the two days before, because like the the reps, like your reps start going down, like you know, I get as many reps, like it's almost like you on the back burner, like okay, you not on the first two teams, you on the third, so like you know, like little signs. So I'm like, what's probably gonna happen? So when he told me like after a preseason game, he like called me and the girl, me and this other girl, like I went, she went in, then I went in. He told me, and I was like, we're going to, you know, we're going to wave you and, you know, wish you the best of luck and blah, blah, blah. But then in Connecticut, she just did it. It was like after practice. For real, like after practice, we just, I was just drinking some water. And she called me and, um, she called me and this girl back. Like, not back, like, we were literally, like, in a practice room. We just, like, took a couple steps back. And she was like, um, we're going to, we're going to wave you guys. Like, she said it to us at the same time, which is weird. I think, like, you could have told us that like separately, you know. Like, yeah. like you don't tell us like we're gonna wait you guys. It's like, all right, it's cool. Okay, okay, it's cool. You know, I appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate any opportunity anybody was giving me, you know, to make a team at that time, especially, you know, not having a team. But I, I knew it was coming. I told you like, I was terrible. You was, was sick. Sick. I was like, this I ain't I tried but I ain't have it. Like it was so bad. Like I had lost like eight pounds in two days. I mm. couldn't eat. I had no energy, you know, like, it was so bad. And I was like, that's why I said, like, everything happens for a reason, man. Like, because I get sick the day before I go to training camp. I ain't been sick all year. Mm-hmm. It wasn't meant to be there. It wasn't. It wasn't meant to be. No, so so from, from there, what, what did you go do? So after I got cut in Connecticut, I go to um, Israel. Yes, Israel. No, no, no. It was Connecticut, it was Germany, Connecticut, then it was France. You know, my friends a little bit. France was good. But then um, nothing after that year, I didn't get any like nothing, no calls, no nothing. And what and what was that time like? I mean, it was obviously like I'm still trying to make the league, you know, I'm like, man, it was tough. It was tough, definitely. I was home, I was in Philly, you know, just working out, I'll be in like Philly, Chicago, back and forth, you know. Um you like, feel, you like Chicago. Yeah, I like Chicago. It's a dope city. Man. People on, people always hear the bad side about Chicago. Like, oh, Chicago, Chicago. No, Chicago got a lot to offer. It's a dope city in the summer. Like, the winters you don't want no parts of, but the summertime, <laughs> the summertime in Chicago is super cool. Um, but yeah, like, you know, I'm back in Quest. Like, I mean, Chicago is all I've known for the last couple of years. So, you know, right. like, I've been there because when I went to school, like, I really came home in the summers. Like, I stayed for summer school. Uh, yeah. Both both sessions, so I'm only coming home like two weeks or a week, and like what you know. You, what did you take up in school? I didn't even ask you. Oh, uh, communications and media. Okay, so you at home right now? I'm at home right now, right? It's it's being put to use that degree. <laughs> <laughs> no, 
So, so um, I, I wanted to ask you, um, like when you're going to all these different countries and playing all these different girls, even when you get these trials, do people like remember you? Like, oh, she was the true fit before. Like, yeah, I get, I still get it. Like, some people I know, like, um. Like, see, people I played against, they oh, yeah, I remember you, like, you was hooping. Like, you know, I still get it, like, yo, you could play. Like, obviously, I still show them that I could play. It wasn't just, I still don't got the hype from college, you know, like, I still got game. Like, you know, like, yeah. it sucks, though, you know, because that's what happens with it. That's what an injury can do, obviously. Injury can, it can make or break your career. Right. Um, so where we at now? Israel? Yeah, Israel. Israel. Israel was the next stop. And Israel probably... That year in Israel was big for me. I played with two other pros, Jasmine Thomas and Michelle Snow. Jasmine Thomas is a good friend of mine now. Um, she plays for the Connecticut Sun now. Like they're like the number one team in the WBA right now. Wow. But I played, so this is my first time playing with pros, you know, WBA players. I don't yeah. want to call them pros because like Everybody. WBA players, you know, okay. take that back. And um, man, we were hooping. We had, good, we had a pretty good season. I was hooping. I remember one time I had a conversation with Jasmine, and she was like, uh, we were just talking over breakfast, like, first time, because, you know, it's our first time, um, like, I, I don't know her, but we on the same team now, so, you know, like, you go, you go, we go to breakfast, and we were at roommates that year, too, that was another thing, we right. lived in the same um, apartment in this room, and I remember we was at breakfast, time. we were just talking, you know, kind of like getting to know each other, and she was like, she was like, I can't believe you haven't played in the league, and I was like, I know, and I was like, you know, yeah, I do have one goal, you know, one goal from this basketball thing, you know, to at least play one year in the league, right? Like, you know, like, I got to play one year, you know? She was like, this is what happened for you. So, so funny. So, after that season, I got the call from, the, from Minnesota for training camp, and I made the team. So, yeah, I was a rookie. I was a rookie at, what, 26? How many years removed from, how many years removed from college? Four, four four years removed from college. And you was considered a rookie at 26. Yeah, 26. I was a rookie. And that was a great experience, man. Minnesota, the organization, the players, the people. It was a real great experience. I met some good people um, there. I learned a lot about the pro game. And that's where I, I really say, like, because I, I didn't play much, obviously. There's five Olympians on the team. Woo! Five Olympians and a lot of really good players, period. You know, um, they had a lot of good vets. And um, I would say, like, being there that season and just, like, being around all that, like, I really probably fell in love with the game all over again. I mean, the way, like, I worked out, like, you know, they would have off days or whatever, but you know, I got to come work out because you don't play, you know? So I'm just working, working on my game. Uh, I met a our assistant, our video coordinator assistant, guy named Wes, we became cool. Still my guy. He's actually a Milwaukee Bucks video coordinator right now. Wow, um, shout out to him. For sure. Uh, Wes, like, we worked out all the time, like, working on pick and roll stuff, anything, like, just, we just worked, and I was like, I felt like myself, like, getting better again. Like, yo, man, like, I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. Like, it's, it's, this is going to be good. Yeah, and I just, man, I enjoy, I enjoy every bit of that, that summer playing with them, them girls. It was, it was fun. We went to the finals that year. Went to the finals, lost to LA in five games. Kind of like on a buzzer beater type. It was a buzzer beater. It was like three seconds left. That's crazy. Like, what are, what are some of the things you learned, you know, like, in terms of, like, the professionalism of the WNBA? Oh, man. So, um... I had, so, vets, there were there were a lot of vets there. I mean, they just tell you the game, you know, what you what you got to do. So, all right, you're a rookie, so you're not, you, you're not playing that much. He's just like, rookie or not, on this team, you're not going to play, really, you know. So, make sure you keep yourself in shape. Like, make sure you're doing extra stuff. Um, they always, like, look, going back to, like, the basics, like, make sure you're on time and stuff. Like, like do what you're asked to do. Right. You know, be a good teammate. You know, you can't, like, you know, obviously, like, you, you, I'm not playing that much, but, you know, I could still be a good person. I could be a good teammate. You know, I could do little things to help the team. Um, just coming to be ready and practice every day. Come, don't take it for granted. You know, I didn't take it for granted, like, that I'm here. Like, come to practice, still ready to work every day, no matter what, no matter if I'm going to play or not. You got to be 
you got to come and work every day. So, like, you got any practice stories of, like, somebody getting fried by these Olympians or something at practice that year? Practice. So, but with the minute with the links, we didn't really like practice against each other much. Okay. We always practice. We all had guys practice players, so we never really got a chance to practice uh, against each other. But like we had days where we did. Now I had to guard Maya. Uh, I was because we both were the three in the match. So guard Maya. It was it wasn't as easy it was as it was in, in college. It was a little better. It was a little tougher, uh, but still hard. Still hard. But no. But she got she got some of it too, you know. I, I ain't just let her. She ain't just bust my ass this time. Like, <laughs> you know, I got I got a couple shots off. Like I was I was I was solid. But yeah, um, we didn't do that often though. We never really played against each other that often. And and that's just the style of practice. Yeah, that's just how that's just how she runs it over there. You know, with with Chicago, we played against each other more than when we were, when I was in Minnesota. Like it was everything practice the guys for every single thing. Mm. So, you was there for one season? One season. So, you kind of completed your goal? Yeah, one season. That was my goal, play at least one season. So, you know, obviously, you know, the goals every year, you know, you set new goals. So. Right. And what were, what were the new goals at that time? Play another season. No, that's dope. <laughs> Stay yeah. around. You know, you want to stick. Stick in the league that where many girls don't stick in, you know. Like, I've seen, you know, I've seen first, first round draft picks be waived the training camp. Like it's just the it's the nature of the league is how it is. It's there's not enough spots for as many women that play. And you got you got good girls. Like these ain't just no bums. Like, you know, these is right. good girls like not having an opportunity. So it's like, man, I got my opportunity. I gotta, you know, hopefully, you know, I gotta stay around. I gotta do what I gotta do to stay around. And uh how 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 did that time there end? It it was good. I mean like I said, we lost in a buzzer beater in the finals. Um, I had a great year being around those girls, that organization. Um, then going to then the next season, I go I go back to Israel. Um, so are you like kind of playing? You play their their season, and then you're going to play the overseas yeah, season. Right into it. Some people some people have five days. Some people have. A week, like you don't get much time from when your season ends in WBA to go to overseas. Season. So is that the way y'all really make the money? Yes, right. excuse me, I'm sorry. That's how we make the money overseas. So, so you do. So basically, you don't play like two seasons a year. Yeah, you play two seasons a year. Y'all don't worry about wear and tear from that. Yeah, for sure you do. I mean, I mean, I, I, I truly. How can I say this? Like, it's it's a it's amazing to me that the women that that have done it for like ten consecutive seasons. They play two seasons a year. Two seasons a year. It's women who've done it for ten consecutive seasons. So is everything like one year deals? Like is that a, is that a common thing? Overseas. Or both, I guess. No, no. So obviously, like you're you're like a big guy, a big time player, but you're like a player under contract. So like you get like a rookie contract. I think it's like three years, four years rookie. But like when I was there, I was a rookie, but I was like a um, it was a I was a special rookie. It's the the word I don't know the word. Hold on. I was a I forgot the name of it. So I can like and I was traded too. So that was another thing. But like no, everything isn't a one year deal. Like the deals with like four year rookie deal, then you can unless you get traded, you can like either be like a, a free agent or restricted free agent. You know, it works kind of like similar like to the NBA. The work is insane. The money is it, you know. Right. <laughs> um, they don't have no restrictions. Like they don't care about risk and injury. Like, all right, I'm a part of this WNBA team, but I'm gonna go play in Israel in the off season. They don't worry about you. I'm pretty sure they do, but they don't pay you enough money to to tell you you can't play. Mm. You know, like if if I'm gonna go over Israel or wherever in whatever country and make more money, like then that's what I have to do. To go over there and play. That's just how it works, and that's how that's how it's been working for for a long, long time for women. So, it, do you think it's getting any better? In your it's opinion? Not, no, it's not getting any better because this we were, we are still going to go play overseas because it's more money over there. Wow. Then we're going to come back, and the ones who play in WNBA are going to play in WNBA. Wow. So, so where we are, where are we at in your career right now? We just finished up losing in the finals. Yeah, just finished losing the finals in Minnesota. Um, 
went home for a couple of days and went right to Israel. And, and it was like a dub or something, right? <laughs> yeah, I went to Israel. I, I was hooping. Um, we like lost in like the semifinals or something. And came back home and uh, came back home. Was getting ready to go to Minnesota. I was going to go to Minnesota like a week early before training camp. Um, and then like it was draft night and like my agent called me. I was getting this call and I was like, I knew something was going on. He's like, oh, you've been traded to Chicago. Whoa. Tra- trade the best of your second home. Yeah, right. It wasn't like, you know, it was crazy. Like I wasn't excited as like people probably thought I was because like I really enjoyed Minnesota. Like I'm like, you know, like I, I like this. Like I like this team. Like I like this organization, you know. How did you like the city? City was cool. It's like it wasn't too much to do, but it still looks like I'm in the States. It's fine. Like, you know, you you traveling a lot. It's not like you need a lot to do. Like I hung out with teammates. You know, we did like usual things. Like right. chill. Um City was cool though. But then they're like, you know, you're going to Chicago, so I wanted to go to Chicago and season was okay. Uh, it was they just traded Belladon. So uh, I skipped uh, kind of like a major part. I wound up going to Chicago. I was being traded to Chicago at the same time. Uh, Kalia Copper was traded to Chicago. So she was a part of the Della Don trade, um, sending her to Chicago. So, you know, I'm in the, I'm in Chicago with, like, uh, like one of my closest friends. Um, yeah, it was that. That part was really cool. Like, basically, not even, like, it was the two Philly girls that was in the league. Are both on the same team, so that was that wow. was the part that was like wow. That's awesome. And what was that? And what was that? What was that experience like that season? You know, having her. It was great. I mean, that's my homie. That's my little homie. Like I, I've been, I've been around her since she was like in the sixth grade. Um, yeah, we just been cool for a long time. No, I, I feel like you got a friend that coach or something. I wanted to ask you about. Is that her? No, that's not her. That's not her. I have a friend that coaches in Florida. Possibly. What's the name of school? She coach she don't coach at a school. Oh, you're talking about my friend, um is that She coached. I don't know. I don't know how See, my fault. This, this... Oh, Sheree. That's what you're talking about. Yeah, Sheree coaches. So sorry. Come on. Man. <laughs> but I'm like, I'm... I'm like friends. Like I'm like, they are my friends. Like Yeah, Sheree coach. Yeah, Sheree. Yeah, she um she just got a job at a Division One school, um, Colgate University. Wow. Mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure you, sure you know you're gonna go there and help out her. If I can, you know, if I'm around, that's another thing though. Like that season is going on overseas, so that's tough. Ah, that's, that's another thing about being over there is like you miss everything. Like you miss everything. You come home for the summers if you're not playing in the league. You have your summers, but still you still miss everything else, right? Like, yeah. No, but it's dope. It's dope to start seeing like how people start transitioning. You know, she getting the coaching and stuff like yeah. that. So I just want to ask you about that. Cause yeah, I got friends that are trying to coach, and like we we what are we? I'm thirty. You probably finished at 22, 23. Like dudes are like seven, eight years out of school, and it's now like they go from assistant, now they're going to coordinator. Some guys are going to head coach, yeah. and it's it's dope to watch them evolve because I'm pretty sure when they started out, they was making pennies, and they're like, I can live off my coaching. Yeah, and it's kind of it's kind of dope to watch it evolve that's like that. That's for sure. That's cool. That's how that was her story. Ray was like a um, like a dobo somewhere, like a one or, maybe where she went. I can't. Sure, don't be mad at me. I can't remember the whole journey and path, but like started like at a dobo at um, I want to say Millersville. Yeah. She had Millersville like graduate assistant something like that, and then like slowly moved up. Um, then she went to um. Where was she at? She was somewhere else. I'm, I'm forgetting. But her recently, I want to say her last season, she was at this um, Division Two in, in uh, Pittsburgh. It was um, Bradford, something. University of Pittsburgh, Bradford, something like that. And she did well there. Then she recently, she just got that coaching job this summer for um, the assistant at Colgate University. Super dope, man. It is. So when you so when you went back overseas, um. You went back to Israel? When I went back, yep, from from Minnesota, I went to uh, Israel for my second year. But I'm getting lost. You, you made some of your stop. I'm trying to, I know. I'm trying, I'm trying to, oh, I know where it was at. Yeah. I know we were at um, Chicago. Chicago. Yeah, so Chicago. I got hurt. Got hurt in Chicago towards the end of the season. And um, 
I was supposed to go to Spain that year. Like I signed to go to this team in Spain that year, but I didn't go. Injured, obviously. So that's how that year went. Did you play a little bit more in your second year at WMA? Yeah, I played a little bit more. It was it was kind of weird, but there was a lot going on with the club. Like new, everything was everything was new, new coach, basically new team. It was like a big transition. Trying to find like a chemistry. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, yeah, I played a little more though. Um, and, and what was the injury you suffered? I had a micro fracture. So what I had in my college senior season, in my right knee, I had it in my left knee, the same thing. But this one was like, this one really was just like one day. I really felt like one day after practice, I was like, man, my knee is sore. Right. And it just, it, it's been for like a week. I was like, man, it's really sore. Like, I hope it's not what I think it is. You know, you, you hope for the best. Like, I hope it's not bad. I hope it's not bad. So I was like, I don't know. Then I was like, man, I just got to get it checked out. So good thing I'm in Chicago. So, you know, go to my doctor, get MRI, go to my doctor. You don't go through the team or nothing? Yeah, no. So I got the MRI through the team and everything. So, you know, I talked to the team doctor for sure because, you know, obviously, like, the team doctor. But then, like, if I'm in Chicago already and I, my, like, I still, I still have a relationship with my doctor. So, right. like, I'm going to send him the MRI. We're going to have our talk about it. And if anything needs to be done, you know. And I'm gonna go through him just because I trust him. You know, I had one successful surgery through him. You know, why change? Right. So how how was how was surgery? Surgery went well. Same thing he told me when he uh, when I woke up from surgery the second time. He's like, we had to go over. We had to do the micro fracture. We did this. We did that. You know, you know the process of it. So I'm just there. I had surgery um, in Chicago the whole time rehabbing. My family came up. That was cool. My family had came up for a couple. They were just coming up for like some games, so they came up for a couple games. And, uh, they took care of me, and I was there. I stayed there all the way until uh, April of the next year, and that's when I was finally done with rehab. I was released and everything. So they they rocked with you through the whole rehab time. The sky. Yeah. Yeah, so like I mean, I did everything. Well, I rehabbed at the Paul, um, okay. just because it was like I had more access to more things. Like um, where Chicago, where where this the sky play at in Chicago is like not technically in Chicago, like far. Okay. Like far, like forty five minutes out. You know, that's like without traffic. And um, and you know, if I go to Palm, right, the city, and then I'm wind up moving closer to the city. So I moved close to the city to go to the car for rehab. It's just like, and then I went back. Oh, I skipped the part. Like I had uh, started my the master program there um, through one of my therapists. I had when I was there. She was telling me about um, like a program. It was, she said it was like the um, how can I say this? Like the holistic part of like sports. So it covered like the medical part, the management part of it. Um, like the facilities part of it, the law part, it was like, it's that type of program. Um, so I had went back to school. So I was, because I went back to school, like I had to be around. So I was kind of like, uh, like just around doing things in the athletic department, helping out, would be at some of the practices, you know, um, cause I'm there, I'm there all the time. So I'm like, I'm rehabbing there, you know, rehab is like a four hour process. I feel like. Right. Did you enjoy the program? Yeah, it was cool. I'm, I'm, I mean, I did one year. I started one year. I'm going to finish, but I, I, I didn't do it this year. It was an online program. Okay. So it was it was cool. Um, it was cool. I didn't ever think I was going to go back to school. It was crazy that I actually like. So so I don't want to skip any more phases, but like, where are you at now in your career now? With playing? Yeah. Um, I played in Spain this season. Um, redemption year, oh, right? Redemption year came back. So the, the team I was supposed to play for, the year I got hurt, wound up won this time again. So I went this season and I had a good year. We we won it. I played Euro Cup. Um, I did really well in Euro Cup. I had some really good games. Like I had a really good season coming off of coming back from that injury. So what what are the goals now? Like because because I feel like you're like. One of the rare cases where I, you know when I meet talk to people, people who have the opportunity to play pro and how long their career go and you cry for them and stuff. It seems like you have really made a, a a decent career out of being able to play. Mm-hmm. 
in the WNBA and overseas. Like, do you feel like you got everything out of basketball that you wanted? Yeah. Um, I think I have. I think I still have more to, to get, though. You know, uh, I'm I'm not done yet. It's 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 near the end. It's definitely near the end. I, I will say like two or three more seasons. I think I can go. Um, just because the my body won't last. It's already like an everyday struggle, you know. Just just getting right, just getting to work out. Like man, like man, I'm this hurt, that hurt. You know, like I think I can go two or three more seasons. Um, I'm going to go to France this year. I say I can go two or three seasons, but I'm taking it one season at a time, obviously. Right. Um, I'm going to go to France this year, actually leaving in a month. We're going to head over there. Um, excited about it. It's a really good league, you know. Um, excited to see what I can do. If a WNBA opportunity presents itself next season, that would be great. If it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's where I'm at with, uh, with basketball. We always mm-hmm. we always ask one here like who are you now you know they knew you in the EMS jersey like who are who what's the what is the person now who is Keisha now man I'm always gonna be a hooper but right now you know I'm transitioning to being in Philly full time because I haven't really been in Philly full time for a while like like spending like the whole summer here you know I want to start you know programs in Philly, like, with starting women's basketball programs, like, I think, I think the women's basketball scene in Philly could be, could be built up a lot more, um, not discrediting anybody who's into it now, you know, but I'm just, I'm just saying, like, we can do a lot more for these young women, right, um, so, you know, when I, when I'm done, I want to start, you know, start things like that, I actually have something going on, I don't know, if, um, I'll mention it now. I have a two two K or two K brand is with the other girl from Philly, Kalia Copper, who is with the Chicago Sky. Um, we started this uh, like Skills and Drills Academy. We had our first. We had a camp last year. First camp. It was like a middle school, high school thing. One day middle school, one day high school. And we had like had a, a great response. Like over probably like hundred and seventy five girls came out. Wow. It was held at Gerard College. Um. We had it was a two day event. They came. We did like a we did like stations, like competitive drills. We had like a lot of giveaways. We had some great coaches, assistants helping us. Um, we just had a really good turnout, and it was all free. It was all free. That's I think I'm. I'm well, we're big into that, you know, giving back. Obviously, giving back what we learned over the years, and we're in a position to do it. So why not do it, you know? Um, Is that something that y'all want to continue to do? Yeah, so actually, we're working on confirming a place for our second our second year. It'll um it'll take place in September. Not sure the exact date. We're pushing for probably like the seventh, but we're going to have a um a one day camp, a one day camp for girls. It's going to be the same setup, whereas it'll be like a middle school in the in the morning and like the um, college, the high school in the afternoon. But then we're planning because Kalia is still in season right now. It's kind of tough, you know. Right. But we're planning. If she plays in Washington D.C. on the next day, September eighth. So we're trying to get like um like plan a trip where we take some of the kids from the camp out to the game. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah. I think it. I think it's gonna be great. You know, hopefully everything turns out. Hopefully we can get it to work, man. It'll be great. You know, because obviously, Philly. Philly kid, you ain't gonna see too much women's basketball, like professional WNBA women's basketball. You know, we don't have a team. Closest team is New York and DC. I mean, and realistically, how many people are gonna really go? Who parent really might get a chance to take them to a WNBA game out there? Like, who, you know, parents don't pretty much always have the time. You know, right. it's, it's tough now. Absolutely. Um, but we're gonna try, you know, try to get them out to that game. No, have you, um, have you started to think about, like, careers and things after basketball like what do you want to do what are you interested in doing for sure i want to coach you want to coach yeah i want to coach i want to coach what has changed over the years is i always said i want to coach college like i want to go college you know i just like i just always felt like man i'm gonna coach college and i'm going but i don't know like it's, it's changed like I, I think like i think i want to start off with the, the younger kids like kind of almost like high school, I think I would say. I don't think I want to go any, any lower than high school right now, but I think I want to coach high school. I, 
I see that like um I can I I think I can give them a different perspective from the game. I'm not like I said, I don't discredit any coaches out there right now, but like like you know, I've done a lot with basketball. Yeah. I've done a lot, I've seen a lot, I learned a lot. So why not give my experience or teach these kids, you know, what I know, you know, why not teach them younger? You know, so they can, I give them the tools for when they get ready to go to college or for what whatever they want to do from there. You know, just I think I think high school is it's like what I'm gearing towards now. If you had one line of advice to a young girl playing basketball in Philly, what would you give her? Uh, yeah. You gotta work. It's about hard work and, and like I, I don't wanna be like cliche, like never giving up. But you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> definitely don't give her the never give up line. Yeah, no, but it's like just like honestly, it's like it's usually about hard work because because now. In today's generation, it's, it's like people want instant gratification. It's always about instant gratification. Everything we do, sports, real work, work doesn't matter. Right. It's always people want to see the results right away. And I think that's what I think now a lot of these kids are kind of like forgetting that it's steps. Like I feel like they, they kind of want to skip the steps, skip steps. They want the, they wanted the glory, you know, without putting in the work. Like you don't understand, like, yo, it takes a lot. It takes a lot to, to get to that level. Right. Takes a lot. It is not. If you think you're good, trust me, it's, it's people out here it's ten times better than you. Like you know, you just gotta keep working. You got you, you gotta put the work in. I feel like um, a lot of our kids in, in the city don't get a chance to be kids, and then they pick an interest in sports. And then they realize like they really gotta apply so much in themselves or exhaust themselves to actually be good, not knowing how much you know how much effort it took. To, to you know whoever their idols are mm-hmm. like how much how much the time they really put in and like having to study that's like I didn't even ask you that like who like studying the game that you're in you're studying basketball I'm studying mm-hmm. football I'm you know I think when you're a kid you just you just like the game yeah that's for sure I said it like one time you like when I was a kid I was like I was gonna play I thought I'm liking T Mac and, and Vince because they could dunk you know yeah. like they could dunk like I wasn't like looking at any other part of the game. But when I when I understood when I started to understand the game, I became a Kobe Bryant fan. I became a fan. Just I just I, I loved everything about his game. Um, and that part, like I think, like when I started to really like study him and like watch, like I was in school, like like in college, I'm watching YouTube videos, like Kobe footwork, Kobe this move, Kobe that move, like just looking. Um, yeah, I think when you're a kid, like. You don't know, you don't know that because you just playing because you because you because you like it or you love it like I'm just I'm playing baseball I like it or I love it which is fine you know I don't I'm not I'm not big on like as a kid you have to enjoy being a kid it's okay if you know it just this is my thing it's okay if you're in the sixth grade and you're not studying this player right. that is fine that is fine for me it's okay like go out there and have fun like go right. have fun enjoy it because I can tell you you know like. You play, yes, we play basketball for a living, and I'm not taking anything away from it. It's like it's a blessing. I want to trade anything for the world, but at times it can feel like, you know, it feels it's you know it's it's tiring. It's like you you lose sometimes you lose the love for it because it's like so much of a business. That's when it becomes like so much of a business. Like you you want that enjoyment of you being a kid again. There was no pressure. It was just like I'm a kid. I'm playing basketball. I think like like kid like guys like Kevin Durant. They always be like I just want to hoop because when the pressure of everything else surrounds them, they're like, man, I just want to hoop. Like, I don't want to have to deal with you saying this or this, that. No, man, I'm just a basketball player. I want to hoop. Like, so I'm saying, like, as a kid, be a kid. Enjoy, like, enjoy the game. Enjoy going out to the park with your friends and playing. Like, you really going to, you going to have the time. Like, the time is going to come where you want to, you're going to study the game and you're going to take, you're going to be doing so much, but when you're a kid, like, I think you should really enjoy being a kid. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, Just getting to the end of this, you know, um, I would love to have more female athletes come in and tell their story, Mm -hmm. their perspective. Um, I want you to recommend me three three athletes I can try to get on the podcast and interview. I got three for you. I mentioned, I probably mentioned all three of them during this interview. I would say... Don't go... Don't recommend me somebody halfway across the world. No, I, I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm going to recommend you some Philly, some Philly girl. She doesn't. This first one, um, she doesn't play basketball anymore, but she did. Like I told you, she played at UCLA. That's her career. 
Uh, Martel Walker is one I would definitely recommend. Uh, Brittany Rankle, you know, if you don't know, Brittany's like currently playing for the Harlem Wolf Traffic. Um, that'd be a good one. Who else is the third one? I would tell you Kalia, but she's in season right now. Um, what's the third athlete? I mean, I can I can tell you my friend who transitioned into coaching, yeah. Sheree Hall. Um, those are three I would I would recommend. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely uh, if you can help me get in contact with them and see if they're receptive, they want to come do the show. I got you. I uh, will. Sure. I just want to thank you for coming up here, mm-hmm. giving us your amazing career. You know, you're a legend to us. You know, people think so highly of you. When I, when I was asking around, like, you know, I need, I need a girl that hoop, man. I, I need that perspective. I ain't had that story yet on here. Mm-hmm. And, and they were very, very big on you. You know, I just want to give you your roses, you know, Appreciate it. I appreciate it. I mean, that's big, you know, to, to get love from people like you don't even know, or people, you know, like just to just to see that or to hear that, you know, people still mention my name, even though it's been some years, you know. Yeah. It's always good there. And I, I appreciate it. And I appreciate you having me. It was great to like talk about my story, you know, to tell people the world who really probably don't know me as much, like some things they, they never know about me. Well, thank you for coming, man. Your pleasure. Thank you, thank you.